Good morning. Welcome to NEK VT Rocks. My guest today is Sharon Stewart. Now, everybody knows you, Sharon. They know you as that petite person with a gorgeous tan who's always moving, 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 moving. So you do exercise classes, you do... I'm a certified personal trainer uh -huh. with a history of group fitness instruction behind me. I have 35 years of the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. Um, what I do now is I've geared my lifestyle to work with people who are not as lucky and fortunate as I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking my knowledge and brought it to the streets, literally. That's incredible. What I've sort of seen is you forever out on the street walking with people who are clearly who have not had the advantages of being able to keep fit and that you're working with them. How do people get hold of you? Um, I'm available by Facebook, I'm uh -huh. available by private messenger, and people can stop me on the street. I'm not, I'm not afraid to stop and talk with you <laughs> or, or join in at certain um, yeah. individuals at clubs and stuff that really need some motivation. Yeah. And, and when people say, I'd like to start walking, but, you know, it's really hard, and they see you, Miss Superfit. Well... Walking is an all-around fitness, and everybody yeah. kind of goes, well, walking won't do fitness, and well, I can't walk, <laughs> and it doesn't burn any calories yeah. and whatnot. But if you go back and you look at people who haven't done anything for any amount of years, right. and at 40 or 45 or 50, and doctors said, you need to start a workout program, yeah. most of these people are lost and have no idea where to go. Right. So this gives them an option. The other reason I really started to push the walking is, as we age, our bodies aren't as friendly to us as they Tell me used about to be. it. <laughs> and injuries prevail. <laughs> yes, they right? do. <laughs> bad knees, bad back, bad feet. Walking is a free exercise. Right. And as long as you stay consistent and you enjoy it, yeah. any type of exercise is going to be beneficial. Yeah. I started to um, volunteer a lot about seven years ago when my friends started to get really, really ill between the ages of 40 and 50 and in one year, I lost seven mm. friends to cancer. Mm. And then I decided that this was going to be a major change in my direction. Mm -hmm. That, I, you know, at a certain age, you go, okay, you can be fit, but I need to go out there and show people how to increase their lifespan and how to stay healthier. And, you know, um, I can't prevent cancer, but right. I can help people become stronger to be able to fight it. Right. That's my purpose. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that I know about you, having sort of seen, seen you around a lot, is that you do an enormous amount of fundraising for some of the cancer organizations. The um, Halo Foundation is my, my specialty because they work with our community. And I'm gonna, yeah. I want to explain this because a lot of people I don't think understand right. my driven motivation for this. Mm -hmm. I love to help people in need, and I know how devastating cancer is to a family. I've seen the devastation wreck in us, an entire family. Mm -hmm. It's expensive, it's costly, it's emotional, it's right. heartbreaking. And it's scary. And it's scary. And what happens with fundraising is you can raise so much money, but that just touches a small amount of right. the bills. When I went to start to help my friend Doris, who passed away a few years ago, I, re I used to do Workout for Hope. And every Saturday, all the proceeds would go to Doris. Mm -hmm. And it was $25, $50 a week, whatever. You know, that's the drop in the hat. Right. So I started to decide, I'm thinking we're going to try something bigger. And I realized that if I joined a bigger force, we would be able to reach more people. Right. So the Halo Foundation was just starting off back then and they were helping Doris immensely and they helped many of my friends so I just said this is where my strength has mm -hmm. to go and what the halo does is they reach everybody in the community who has cancer who is in need of funding that even if it's gas money or oil mm -hmm. or or helping paying their rent they never say no to anyone right so I'm constantly trying to find ways to uh -huh. help keep the money coming in so that we can keep the money going out. And um, in last two, a year and a half ago, my husband was diagnosed with a stage four cancer and mm. I never realized how 
emotional or financially devastating this right. could be. And I put more of my energy into helping the HALO Foundation. But recently, Mark and I have decided to help build a hospice house in Newport, which is very, very close to our heart. Um, uh, they want to break ground. They want to put a 16, Church of God, Pastor Wall, want to put up a 16-bed facility for end of life mm -hmm. so that people don't end up in a nursing home. And to be honest with you, the end of life, it, nobody wants to be alone. Right. And it, sometimes it's way too hard for a family member mm -hmm. to keep a loved one at home. Yes. So now you're, now you're going to see somebody that's really on a mission to raise money. So this is our next project. So this is a joint project that you're doing with Halo and with the Church of God? Church of God and Halo, <clears throat> right, and my husband. That is great. And Dina Gray. She told me she's going to help me. <laughs> oh, she will. You and know raised she will. on radio. You know yep. she will. <laughs> so I, what I do is I put all the forces to be mm -hmm. out, and then we come up and, and keep keep pushing it. And so all, all of you that jump in and enjoy a good time, a party, a dance, please join us because it all goes to a good cause. So how are people going to see this advertised so they know when oh, it's there? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be out. We're looking for the middle of September. Uh -huh. um, we're trying to nail down a date, and then we'll get the posters out, the flyers out. Right. I'll be on Facebook. Yeah, it'll it's be word everywhere. Of mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also, the other bonus to this is that we, I have to let you know that there's no charge to any cancer patient that approaches me and wants to get fit. I open my time, my door, mm -hmm. whether it's walking or whether it's aqua tabata or whether it's a boot camp. Mm -hmm. Any well, obviously they probably don't want to do a boot camp. Huh? Right. <laughs> Be surprised. Anything that they say, Sharon, I really, I, I'm, yeah. I'm fighting chemo. I need to get strong. Please help me. Right. And that, that is where I spend most of my time. So when you see me out on the street and I'm walking and I'm on a mission, it's a to get to somebody. Yeah. Or b I've just come from somebody, or mm -hmm. to bring people out. Yeah. And the other um, venture I have is to, I, I started to um, pay attention to BART and uh -huh. to the road to recovery. And I stop in there mm -hmm. a couple times a week to see if I can throw my motivational fitness around. Because it's amazing how people want to try to change their lives. They just right. don't know how. Mm -hmm. And even sitting, holding their hands and and letting them know it's okay that they're not alone. That means a lot to them too. Yeah. So you're giving classes at Bart or just? I just go over yeah. and get people out and see if they want to walk or try to get them into the pool uh -huh. or sit and chat with them. Yeah. Have you ever contacted Journey to Recovery Center? Which yeah, is I've been at Journey to Recovery Center. You've been everywhere, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's getting people together. It's, I think it's a bridge of fear yeah. versus the unknown. Right. Right. And they're like, okay, I want to go with it, but I'm not sure what she's going to do to me. Right. So going back to the hospice, which to me sounds really exciting, do you have a site for it yet? Yeah, I believe they do. I believe that Mark's done all the architectural work, uh -huh. and I think they have a site. I'm ready for a meeting coming up soon to find out the preliminaries. Uh -huh. But we're, we're hoping, oh boy, we could have used this yesterday. So as soon as we can get it going, it'll be yeah. a blessing. That'll but I couldn't it. ask for better angels to work with. When you call on your angels for support, boy, mm -hmm. <laughs> show up. So That's really amazing. Well, and you know we have friends that could definitely use yes. the hospital. Absolutely. House. Absolutely. And you know, uh, like I said, when you have a loved one at home, it's one thing to say I'm gonna take care of them, we're gonna let them go in Sometimes on their it's own. Just it's not just possible. too much. Yeah. And so the other thing about this hospice house is I hope that the community will reach in and volunteer hours, mm -hmm. you know, even to sit right. or to do the dishes or to yes. help with the laundry. This is such a great thing, and our, our community just needs it so badly. Yeah. And there are so many ways of helping yeah. Halo and and people indirectly Oh, as my well. gosh, yeah. The Halo, the Halo Foundation is an amazing group of young people with so much energy and it, it takes a phone call mm -hmm. for someone to say, G you know, when going back to my husband, when he got diagnosed, he was strong and he was on what we called the miracle pill. Mm -hmm. And the miracle pill worked up for a year and kept him mm -hmm. fighting. Nobody even knew he was sick. And then right. in March, we ran, in December, 
the doctor told him he was overweight. The oncologist said, Mark Stewart, you're high cholesterol and you need to lose 20 pounds. Yeah. Because this will kill you faster than cancer. So we went home that winter and we worked out and we trained. And in March, we ran a half marathon in mm -hmm. Sarasota. Mm -hmm. And he'd lost his weight and his blood pressure had come down. Yeah. And this is, my, this is why I pumped this and I pushed this so hard. So in March, he was fit. And then in the 1st of May, he started to feel like he had the stomach flu. Mm -hmm. And then he, in, a, in doing working out, he thought he threw his back out. Right. So on a Tuesday morning on May 1st, I got a call in, when I was running in Newport Center, and he said to me, I am in trouble. I can't get out of my car. Wow. I think I've got a kidney stone. Well, he checked himself into the emergency care, mm -hmm. and they rushed him to Dartmouth, and what had happened is that his tumor in his bowel stopped reacting mm. to the chemo. And it grew so fast, exploded, mm -hmm. and took out seven inches of his bowel. Wow. So we had to, I had to run as fast as I could. Anyways, that was another story. But the, the point to this story is that had he not lost that weight, mm -hmm. brought his blood pressure down, right. he would have died on the table. Because oh. it was, I mean, it was that kind of just yeah. abrupt surgery. So... That was in May. His recovery was amazing, and now we're back fighting the cancer again. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the reason that I'm promoting this and I'm trying to reach out to everybody is the difference between life and death. Right. So if I can make a difference and save your life, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's, more money, that's worth more money than $100 an hour to give me. <laughs> right. And, it, and it's a proof. You, everyone says to me, oh, my God, I can't believe your husband has stage 4 right. cancer. But we follow the eating plan, I make him exercise, you know, I keep him strong so that he's able to fight mm -hmm. whatever they throw at us. And so when you see me, don't be afraid to approach me. I put things on Facebook all the time about eating plans or exercise plans yeah. or things that are that I feel like could help you. Right. But, um, you really are better. a woman on a mission. <laughs> I am on a mission. I just wish that it was more yeah. productive. but. Well, it sounds pretty productive. I mean, hospice is a big step forward. You did a recent fundraiser that was also for Halo that was at the east side. Oh, Clearly yeah. You had Dino involved. We did, um, a, we did the annual Friends of Halo, which right. is a thank you, Halo Foundation, mm -hmm. for all you do. And we were able to raise $7,300 that night. That so was that was awesome. Pretty incredible. But on the same note, like Hillary said, they give out $7,300 a week in money yeah, to people so it that goes fast. it goes fast and and you know if yeah. you ever have a chance to make a donation right I always think boy the halo foundation can yeah. always use it i learned recently a really neat way to donate to halo is you know where the metal recycling place is yeah. at crawford road oh yeah that's the there's the great big skip there mm -hmm. that if you've got anything metal that you want to get rid of just put it in that skip and it's recycled and halo gets the money that's one of the um brothers who the who runs the foundation? Yeah. They're the um, there's I think there's four of them. Yeah. But they're always on a mission. The next big fun fundraiser that's coming up is the um, scavenger hunt, and you're going to see a lot about that. Uh -huh. That's in October. That's a lot of fun. And that's another fundraiser. That's another fundraiser. Yeah. Uh, the goo they call it the wild goose chase. It's um, uh -huh. a community involvement, so the whole community gets involved, and they give you places to go. And they say, fine, Sharon Stewart. <laughs> and then you, I check you off and you get points and you win prizes. So it's one that you do through time? It's not all done on one it's day? It's a day on one day. You get a, oh. um, they work in teams. Okay. And you sign your team up. And then the team that gets to the most, finds the most spots, uh -huh. wins. Cool. I think that's how it sounds I, like a lot of fun. I always, I love it. I wait every year to donate because yeah. you never know where they're going to put me. One day I did burpees in the rain at the high school, <laughs> and everybody kept saying they said find Sharon Stewart, and the guy, the guys at the gym were like, she's not here. We don't know where she is. So, it, <laughs> but people found you. Yeah, and the whole there's everyone in the like the whole community <laughs> passes the toilet around. Is a pink toilet that shows up on yeah. people's property. So you start to watch for this. It's called the wild goose chase. And what and do you do a, with the toilet? 
spoilers. Well, and you move it. You hopefully you're going to move it to somebody else's property. Do you tell them before you no, move I it? No, I don't know well, that. So end you of just that. park it on yeah. somebody's I ground. I just watch for it to show up. Oh, that's hilarious. I'll have to ask the reason behind that. So if it shows up in my front yard, you'll know where it came from. Yeah, and then I can just slide it somewhere else. Yeah, and no, leave I don't it think in there. I love it. <laughs> I think they pay donations for that. I'm not sure. I'll, oh. I'll, when it gets closer, we'll have Hillary on. And she'll explain yeah. the wild goose chase. Oh, that's a lot of fun. They start working. They put a lot of time into that. They start working on that, I think, last month. Uh -huh. And it's not till October or something. It would be so much fun to put that on somebody's front oh, lawn when they didn't know. We used to put n plastic gnomes on people's yards when I was a kid. We still yeah. did that. My son, that was when he played American Legion ball, was yeah. the ball players were notoriously stealing people's gnomes. Yeah, and guys, putting them somewhere, somewhere else. else. In the, in the, they had one that was dressed in the American Legion suit, I think, at one time. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's a great fundraiser. There's a lot of good fundraisers in the area, and you know what? Don't be afraid to step out and yeah. volunteer or take part in them because there's so much fun. And you know, it gives you such a great feeling to know yeah. that you've done something that's going to really change somebody's life. There isn't anybody in the community, and that's the whole of the Northeast Kingdom, who doesn't know or hasn't been personally affected by somebody. With like, cancer. Oh, of course not. You could stand up in any room and ask yeah. somebody to look to the left of you or look to the right of you, and somebody has been affected right. by cancer. My, I, I lived, my mother's been at six in 1975 with uh -huh. cancer, so I grew up with it. Yeah. And my father and my grandmother, I mean, it's just been such a big part of my life. But it wasn't until um, I started to lose my best friends that was yeah. really hard. And then then it hits your husband and you, it, it gets, gets too closer, close. Too close yeah. <laughs> or yourself, right. Yeah, and, and my husband used to say, oh boy, we, we, he'd wake up every morning and goes, we missed a bullet today. <laughs> then one day I was like, oh, well, that bullet hit you head on, didn't it? Yeah. So, and you, you know, it doesn't matter whether you smoke, you know, of course we say smoking is bad for you and yeah. eating is bad for you and drinking is bad for you, but some, if you have a genetic base right. to this, it's going to get it's not your together. fault. But it the, truly is. But the healthier you go into this, yes, and the fitter you are, the easier it is mm -hmm. to fight it. And it's never too late to get fitter. Exactly. Exactly. I, I have so many people that I've been able to help that are going into um, uh, tra bone transplants or 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 bone marrow transplants yeah. that had to be in you know be in tip top shape right. so that they could fight because their immune system was going to be yes disheveled. I mean, we <laughs> think of. Obliterated. Yeah. Same, yeah. And same thing with my friends that were finishing radiation. It was just that feeling of getting out in the fresh air and, you know, feeling good about yourself. 98% of it is that you feel good about yourself, too. Yes. My next, my biggest thing is I wanted to open a store that with the wigs and the uh, makeup and uh -huh. everything that goes along with the chemo that we don't have access to. Right. You know, that would be a huge thing on my plate if I was... And well, maybe if you years. put that out there, something will come back. There may be other people who are interested in working on that with you. Yeah, or well, I'm hoping maybe in the hospice house they'll have a room that yeah. we can better reach yes. people. Because a lot of things that are that we have that they need or have to be ordered or yeah. you know you have to get at the hospital. And this way you can sit in a room and find out what works for you the best. Mm -hmm. and, and there is a locks of love group up here. Yeah, a lot of people have donated hair that goes to wigs and everything. But yeah. you know, having friends and watching friends try to order wigs offline and getting them in and being completely devastated that that's not what they wanted. Right. Where I always said, oh my God, wouldn't it be nice if we had a selection and could try them on and yes. they could see what they look like. And yeah, instead because of if having, you don't know how you're going to look in something right, the and box it's not of who wigs, you think. Right, right, right. Oh, right. That's, that's hard. That's, way, that's my big dream. Yeah. So we'll see. One step at a time. Yeah. What other dreams do you have that are becoming reality for helping other people? Right now, it's getting this hospice house off the ground and making sure that people understand to reach out to me or to, you know, and ask mm -hmm. for help because that's what we're here for. There's a purpose. I believe that God gave me a purpose mm -hmm. in life and, and made me healthy. And I keep fighting, and this is what I'm supposed to do. I know yeah. I'm supposed to do it. I just need to... Right. But have people take part in it. Yeah. Here's a weird question. Uh, Church of God. We all know, pro or most of us probably know the Church of God, but not all of us are Christians. I'm so Jewish. My point exactly. 
clearly this is not just for people who belong to that faith or no, that religious no, no, group. No, no, I, what, what I was go when I was telling you the story about Mark and how he was out of commission, yeah. the same thing, the Church of God came down right. and my husband's garden was fixed. I mean, we had so many people that stepped in yeah. to help him and he, is, we're just so appreciative. There's sure. just, we, it, the amount of support that we've re we have received from the community is overwhelming. And it, I can't tell you enough, we can't give back enough to right. these people. That, you know, when you look at your house and you go, oh my God, I can't do the gardening, I couldn't do the lawn, it was just, we were so overwhelmed. I and can't then, even shop. I yeah, mean, all of a sudden. How am I getting food in the house? Exactly, and that's what we're here for. So it's, it's pay it forward, pay it forward. Right. You know, if you can't do your shopping or you need some help, this is what we're here for. Yeah, yeah. Pay, pay it forward right. is, is such a wonderful principle. Oh, my God. And you, we can all do that. Uh, anyone can do that. You know, uh, I'll stop in and say to somebody, do you need some groceries today? Or can I help yeah. you do your laundry? Or, you know, right. a lot of people are, I don't want any kind of, um, what do you call it? Um, they don't want charity. Right. But it's not charity. No. It's not. It's because we, someone has done good to us, so we're giving back to do yeah. good to and others. Community helping community yeah. is, is so important, and that's something people up here can do and do do really well. The one thing about living in a small community that keeps me vested here, uh, my husband, is the fact that, that you somebody's always reaching out to help somebody. You're yeah. never really alone. Right. No, ask Manfred. He's never alone now. Right. Is there a way that you can get young people involved? I say this because you're a parent. Mm -hmm. You've got a young daughter. Oh, I, I, my kids, and I think they're all part of this. When I, I just say to them, we're, go, we're going to do a fundraiser, and they'll be like, okay, let's go. So everybody <laughs> takes part in it. And I don't mind saying to my kids' friends, can you help me? Can you do this? And yeah. everybody's on board. A lot of people don't know how to help. And so, you know, and a, a lot of ones want to help, but they're just not sure how to help. Right. You know, you could get out and sell tickets, or you could get out and mow somebody's lawn. Right. Or you could get out and take somebody to the grocery store, or just sit and t chat with them is a lot, too. Right. Or collect cans, or and collect cans. cans and take it up to rights. Right, right, Toss right, it in right. the bin. Yeah, or come clean my garage and then take it to rights. <laughs> Why not? Why That's not? We idea. all have metal stuff hanging yeah. around. Well, my, gr my, my basement is going to go to, all the toys in the basement are going to go to Altamash for her little fundraising. So uh -huh. it always goes yeah. in different circles. What other projects do you have further back in your mind that are just waiting to come forward or That's for it something? For now. It I, is? Yeah. I don't believe you. No, I'm <laughs> I really don't believe you. I, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, yeah, no, one step at a time. My next, part, my next project is to dance for the hospice house. And then my other projects are just getting people into the, the fitness world and trying out the different facilities too. You know, we are blessed to be in a community that has the wellness center. Mm -hmm. for um, Zumba classes or right. stretching classes. And I just recently went to workouts at Pride, which I really enjoyed, hmm. you know. And so we, for, in the community, forget that these are all hidden right. venues. And Some of them are expensive, yeah. which sometimes and is a challenge. I, I, and I think that if you were to approach them and say, listen, I'm on a budget because I have cancer, I, right. I'm pretty sure that most of them would may help you out a little bit. And then there's always, I've got some exercise program going somewhere all the time, which is totally, like I said, for free if you approach me and say, yeah. I can't afford it and I need to get in shape, I would have you jump yeah. in. But our community, we're blessed. We have so much available for people and I, and I really hope that you get out and find something that you enjoy, whether it be dancing or yoga or Pilates, mm -hmm. or weight training. Or swimming. Or swimming, or coming yeah. to my Aqua Tabata classes. <laughs> in the winter, we do it at Freedom Therapy, and in the summer, we do them at my pool. Which and is lovely. That's a whole new area of fitness that people are so unaware of. Yeah. And it, you're like my friend here, Pam, with the broken leg. We got her in there. Yes, right? I love it. Obviously, I'm a swimmer. I love to Back water. injuries, yeah. knee injuries, and as you age, your heart stays ready, but your body goes, wait, you yes, know, I can't. True. And so what we do in the water is the same we do on land, except for that it takes all the pressure off of yes. your joints. And that I definitely would recommend to anybody trying to 
recover or stay in shape or get yeah. into shape. Yeah, it's too bad we don't have a real pool here anymore. But well, I know. We used we've to got have. what we've got. Um, That's right. We, we can do, do it. We do have beautiful facilities that have yes. pools. And when, um, like, I've been at Freedom Therapy for three years. Mm -hmm. And I go through the winter and I, I absolutely love it there. Mm -hmm. The pool is just enough size for a great workout and there's a shower to rinse off. Yep. And you go and you, and, and it's available all day long for people. Do you ever use the pool over at the other physical therapy place? Um, no, I haven't yet, no. Okay. No, uh, maybe eventually they'll yeah. invite me over and say, would you like to? But that's on the, on the fourth. You wait for an invitation? I, uh, you? Sometimes I do. <laughs> sometimes I, sometimes I involve. <laughs> Who asked me that? Did you just mention a modification? Yeah, no, I don't always push my way in. I <laughs> try to get invited. <laughs> Doesn't always work. Hey, if you throw it out there that you'd like to be invited, I bet somebody will call up and invite you. Yeah, that's true. Or, or they'll say no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that's my, what's on the forefront. And winter's coming, so we all have to think really think seriously about how we can stay motivated right. and stay out of the depression and stay fit. And 90% of what we suffer through the winter here is lack of sunlight. Yes. Lack of sunlight, lack of motivation. Mm -hmm. And so here my mind is working, how can we turn around and right. keep people moving through the winter? Maybe a cross country skiing group, mm -hmm. maybe using the trails on yeah. the bluff road. Which are lovely. Oh, beautiful walking trails, yeah. yeah. What do you say to people who are scared of going out in the winter because it's slippery? And it is. And if you're afraid of falling for some very good reasons. Well, my net, my again, my vision for the winter is to set up a walking program mm -hmm. at the municipal building eventually for seniors because mm -hmm. I keep I we used to have IROC. Yes. And that was such a great area to walk in and for one I look out for my seniors for safety and because they slip and fall yeah. and it only takes one <laughs> time right and the other thing is that if we had a walking program inside with a somebody like myself that would motivate people or just be there to talk yeah. with them I believe they'd feel safer because we're CPS certified right and they wouldn't be afraid about collapsing or being yeah. dizzy a lot, a lot of fear walks with our elderly that we don't understand mm -hmm. and they actually would I think would benefit by knowing that they could come right. walk from like one to three yeah. And yeah. they, you know, and have the music playing. Some places have malls that people can walk in. We don't have. We a don't mall. have that. Yeah. But I think the I, eventually they something. just been the the municipal building's been closed for the summer for renovations, mm -hmm. or they put a new floor in and everything. Ooh, nice. So, uh, as weather bad weather turns around, I will approach the city council mm -hmm. and ask them oh, to great. put a program together for our seniors because I believe that if we had a place for people to come from like noon to three yeah. or noon to two and had music going and every had somebody, day or twice a yeah, week whatever three times yeah. a week and just someone to check your blood pressure not check yeah. your blood pressure check your pulse rate mm -hmm. just so that they're not scared right. to be there alone because yeah. we know um a lot of people will might feel short of breath sure. or faint and at least you know there's somebody there that yeah. can and it's fun to walk and other the other thing is exercise. right you if you go like at, when we used to have IROC people would make a plan mm -hmm. I'm going to meet so and so there and you always right. had your friends and then you didn't the winter didn't seem to right last so long so yeah. that's the vision you're shocked to know that we are now out of time oh, it goes so time. fast it, Thank you so much for coming in. As the hospice gets nearer, because obviously it's going to happen, will you and probably some of the others come in and talk about oh, it? Oh, I'll bring everybody in. I'll get Hillary Great. on board, Pastor Wall. Yep. You tell us who you need. We'll be cool. here. Great. And thank you. I hope to oh, see you all. Oh, in your last minute. <laughs> and I want to finish class. <laughs> she takes every opportunity. Any Go opportunity. Sharon. It's great. Thank you. <laughs>